Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be talking about API rules in Pocket Base. Now we talked a little bit about API rules before, but we didn't really get too deep. We just did enough to help lock down our endpoint. But now that we've looked at filtering expressions, I figure it's time we circle back and close the loop. So let's jump in. So if we go to our cards collection and then we say edit collection um, so that we can pull up the API rule, then for now, I'm just going to click on the documentation. I'll go straight there. As you can see here, um, it lists the API rules you can have for this collection. And as you can see, we already, like I said, had some rules in there um, to make sure that only certain people who are authenticated could create or only the owner of the record could update it. So what else is going on? What else can we do? Well, if we look at the filters syntax, which is essentially those expression that you can put on the rules, well, they look exactly like the expressions that we pass for filtering out records. And that makes sense because the rules that you put as the API rules to say, who can create and all this sort of stuff or which record should be returned. Well, you could think of it as those expressions also going to be the ones that you're going to use when you're looking for records to say which records you should get. The other thing that you have here is when you type in API rules, you have the re request object, you have access to all the collections and you have a few macros. And some of those macros allow you to do things like today's date, the year, the month, that sort of thing. And then you have some modifiers like is set to check if something is set, check the length of something, or even to check each element of a collection. And so we see it though, you have a little bit more to play with here in API rules that you don't have with say the query filter expression, but they're all pretty much the same, right? You still have the same set of operator twilda for, for contains equal for exact match and question mark equals that sort of thing for any slash one of that, all that stuff matter. You still have all those things you still have. The one thing that is not shown in the documentation that you do have, and that is you do have your back reference. And to see that, let's go over to the user's collection. And imagine that I'm making a view, which we're going to see in the next video. But here I can you see that I can actually use the back reference, which is that dynamically created um, field called cards view user in the case of users collection to access the user card. And I can use that as a, an expression or a value within my expression so I can even filter out things. So even here in the API rules, we still have access to our back reference. So that is good to know. So that's what I wanted to show you and make sure that you understand that this is still available to you. Now you see it all just like how you can build a very complex expression for filtering out records. You can do the exact same thing for API rules because that is going to do the exact thing, which is filter out records or say which records should be included or excluded. So we've covered API rules, we've covered filtering expression, and now we see that how all these things come together to give us, you know, a really powerful um, set of tools to build endpoints. And so that's it. I just really wanted to close out, close that loose end about um, API rules. And if you're still watching the video, and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. What are you waiting for? Um, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. Appreciate you subscribing and coming back and being patient. Mikhail, thank you for being a Patreon subscriber. If you'd like to support the channel, here are a few ways in which you can do that. Take care, see you in the next video.